So we've already gone through most of the syllabus. There's not a lot to it. It's very similar to what we looked at last class. I went over my name, office location right up above, office hours, phone number, email address, the class information, and the fact is that that shouldn't have been written like that. We'll probably go through about the first eight chapters. All right. All right. So the idea is that you'll have a beginning, maybe through intermediate understanding of Java. All right. The class that goes after this one is Advanced Java. And I'm saying this, believe me, when you think I'm being a smart aleck or whatever, I'm not, I have no idea who's going to teach that in fall, but if it's me, all right, then we go through the advanced, the rest of the book in about the first half of the semester. In the second half of the semester, we start doing Android. If it's somebody else, I can't speak for them. I have no idea. All right. This is the book. I've got it right here. It literally is fairly new. Should be coming up in here, too. It'll come up sooner or later. All right. I want to make sure people know this, too. We talked about this last hour. And again, I realize not all of you were in here. But if you're not into the virtual desktop, please get into it if you know how. And if you don't, I'll walk through it with you in just a couple minutes. All right. But the, uh, the gentleman who was over here asked me at the end of last class, he said, well, what do we do when we want to turn assignments in? I cannot get to your virtual desktop. Did you all hear that? I do not have the ability to do that. I wouldn't want the ability to do that. That's your virtual desktop. All right. So when, when you're all done, so for example, in a virtual desktop, when we were looking at this last hour, let's say we'd finished this coin flip. Then my recommendation is when you're all done, you right mouse click, you choose copy, you go over to your H drive and you create a folder on your H drive that's called something like, for the last class, 152, 142. All right. And then underneath there, you create another folder that's called completed. And then you, f you put that folder in there. Does that make sense? And if you're not going to do that, let's say that the assignment, we don't have any yet. Let's say you had one and it was due today. Don't think, you, you cannot email that to me. You can right mouse click on here, do a send to, and go to compressed, and take that zip file and email that to me. That you can do. I don't care if you put stuff in your H drive, or if you email it to me, or if some people do both. You just don't trust you know, the, you know, our email system or whatever, but whatever way you want to do it. But be consistent in the way you do it. But you should all have, uh, under your H drive, you should have both a 152, 142 folder. All right, and for this class, you should make another one and do the same thing, 152, 143. And again, inside of there, put another folder, and only put work that's ready to be graded in your completed folder. Does that make sense? I mean, once it's put in there, I'm not saying that you can't change it. If I haven't graded it yet, you can. But that's where I look for stuff, or stuff that's emailed to me. All right. Other than that, most of you in here have had classes with me before. In fact, I think in this class, other than one or two, everyone has. All right. So stuff isn't going to change as far as the protocol, et cetera, and the way things are done from the way it was done last semester. Again, assignments, I'm not sure how many they'll be. We'll do several of them together. Just like with the last class, the plan is that we will create up, we will create a program at least as a class and you will be responsible for turning those in. That will be part of your grade. And then I will go over what's in the book. Now, the bad thing is, unlike the last class, he hasn't put uh, the, the book in here under CourseSmart. So I have to see if i, I got to email my rep and have him put it in here, because right now I have no way of getting to it. Core abilities, I mentioned this in the last class. These are all things that if you go through any program here, whether it's for a degree or a diploma or whatever, by the time you get out, interwoven into one or more of your classes, you should have this stuff. In here, it's use appropriate technology and solve problems efficiently. The competencies, they very much dovetail with what you see in the book as far as what the chapter headings are. I'm not going to read any of them to you. 
They like us when we write these competencies to make them active, so it's demonstrate, but it's demonstrate the ability in Java to do this, or this, or this, or this, or this. That's what the class is about. All right. All of the material is online under the P drive. You can't read that very well. Again, it's right there. It's also out under Blackboard. And I said this in the last class, in case you were in there, if, if you haven't been to Blackboard lately, all right, or if you haven't gone out onto the, the school's website lately, there's the, now there's the portal, the MyBTC portal. If you have any problems with that, you'll have to let me know. The good news is right next door to us is the Blackboard people, and next door to them are the portal people. All right, so if we have a problem, ideally we'll be able to get it fixed fairly quickly. As always, I prefer that you email me and I attempt to turn stuff around. I put within a 24-hour period. I didn't get dinged for that last semester, but I know in the past somebody has emailed me on a Friday when I'm not here, and I was out of town. My daughter, my oldest daughter, you maybe heard, remember this from last semester, me saying this. She lives in St. Louis, so once every other month or so I go and visit her. So I don't bring a machine with me. I literally don't. I don't want to look at it through my phone. I just want to forget this place exists for a weekend. All right. So that's the, the only time that typically you won't hear back from me fairly quickly. And again, if you weren't here last hour, because I want to make sure you hear this, that Terry is the virtual desktop engineer here. So if you have problems getting on, your virtual desktop is locking up or whatever, email him at tprindle1 at blackhawk.edu. You can email him directly. My recommendation is that you also CC me on any emails in case he doesn't get it or there's any kind of problem. That's right here, Terry Prindle. He's the, yeah. That's only if you have problems with the, um, with the virtual. Now, if you can't get a hold of him and you can't get a hold of me, you can always, always, you can do this too. You can go to help desk at blackhawk.edu. All right. And you can send it them to them and they'll try to make sure it gets funneled to the appropriate person. The advantage of going to Terry right away is he's the guy who's designed to work on this stuff. That's one of his charges, so to speak. All right. So if you go, wow, this virtual desktop's great, it's him. If you go, wow, this virtual desktop stinks, it's me. All right. I do appreciate all the work that they do. And he should get all the praise. And if there's any blame to go around, it should go to me. All right. Questions on that? Any of that stuff? All right. It's going to be different in here. We're using a different environment. All right. If you don't know this, all right, first of all, because a lot of you evidently didn't from last semester, this is Java. The class you took last semester was JavaScript. All right. Java was around before Java. Script. All right. When JavaScript was first created, it was called LiveScript. But around that time, Java came out. And somebody who, instead of calling it LiveScript, came up with a great idea hey, let's, you know, piggyback onto Java and call it JavaScript. So they got permission to do that. But they're two different things. What we're going to be doing in this class are writing what are called Java applications. You don't need the web for anything we do this semester. Virtually, you don't need it. Either. You really don't need the web. Next semester, we go over what are called Java applets. With applets, you need the web. But for all the stuff we do this semester, you don't. All right. So if you weren't here in the last class, and I know some of you were not, and that's OK, if you weren't, what you should see once you log in is this right here that says VMware Horizon client. That should be on your desktop. If you say, well, it's not on mine, then you might have to search for it. If you click your start button and you go to all programs and we go down near the bottom, there's VMware and it's right there too. If, it, if you didn't have it out on your desktop, I'd suggest then you right mouse click, drag it out and choose create shortcut here. You say, I don't want to do that. It's okay. Then you're always, always going to have to go in like start, all programs, VMware and go down that way. Either way, it's OK. All right, so this is just mainly for the people who were not in from last hour. Once this comes on, just double click it. And then you'll get in, all right, then you'll get in the way that we used to. 
In other words, you'll log in the same way that we've logged in before, and eventually you're going to get to where you'll be at a different desktop. So if you're not logged into the virtual desktop, please do that right now. All right? And for the rest of us, if you're already in, and just so everybody sees this, what we're going to use in this class is we're going to use an integrated development environment called Eclipse. There's other ones that can be used. There's other environments. There's NetBeans. It literally is possible to do your work inside of Notepad++. But if you do it inside of Notepad++, then what you have to do is, in, under this run thing, you've got to go in and you've got to add a bunch of stuff. And it used to work, and it was real seamless. And I had people do it that way. Then it became nothing but a major pain in the butt. All right? So I, that's why I made the decision, good, bad, right, wrong, to go with Eclipse. Okay? Eclipse is another thing. It's on the virtual desktop already, and it's free, just so you know that. So if you would want to put it on your own machine for whatever reason so you can go at it without being on the virtual desktop, you can do that. There's a download button here, and you can just download it. There is an Eclipse for Java. There is an Eclipse for PHP. There is an Eclipse for a few th different things. If you say, well, you know what, I already know NetBeans. I'd rather use that. You can use that, too. I'm not going to go over any of that. And I, I, they're not totally compatible, Eclipse and NetBeans, but as long as I can dig out your .java file, I don't care if you do that. So I don't really care how you do it. There's, there's a lot of different ways that this stuff can be done. All right? So Eclipse.org is the kind of the magical place for it. And I don't know if it's even still out here or not, but... Uh, know if this is still the one or not. I think it is. And again, you don't have to do what I'm about to tell you. All right. So what I'm about to tell you or show you here, you don't have to do this. But sometimes when people go through this stuff, you're like, you know, I sort of get what you're talking about, but I wish I had more information than what you've provided in class. So there is a tutorial online, and that's View Lesson 1. The, the tutorial is actually the first probably half dozen lessons. There's about 17. It's actually really good. All right, you'll laugh a little bit. I'm, I, I'm not going to undo this, but you'll laugh a little bit if you heard it because the music that's in there sort of sounds like Deliverance. It's bad banjo music. But it's just for the first 10 seconds or so when he starts and when he ends. But it's actually very well done. And they go through how to build projects in Eclipse and how to do a whole bunch of stuff. So if you are interested in that, you can go out to here. And I'll leave that up there for just a second. All right, http colon slash slash eclipse tutorial dot sourceforge .net, et cetera. In fact, what I'll do is I'll take this file I'm working on, I'll save it into the in-class folder with today's date on it. So you don't have to even write that down. There were, last time I checked, there were about 17 lessons or something like that in here. You go, wait a minute, they're not, no, they're not. If I click the download button, 16. There they all are. And you can download them if you want to. They've got the MP4s, they've got everything that's in there. I'm not going to go into nearly the depth and breadth of coverage all right, with that. I've done it before in the past. All that seems to do is put us behind, and I don't want us to get behind. All right. The other thing that I want to show you, and I've got to make sure I've got them saved out here someplace. Is I've got, I didn't know whether we do these as a class or not, but I'm not going to. So in other words, what you'll see are literally right before your eyes, because I haven't done it yet, is in the folder in here, in the in-class folder, I'm going to go and first start by putting in a new folder here that's got today's date on it, 01-12-2015. Uh, and then what I'm going to drop into that are 
a bunch of already made Java programs. So if you want to go in and start looking at that, you'd be able to. Don't worry about the chapter numbers. It's from an older version of a book that was like this book, but it's not this book. But there's a bunch of stuff in there for you already if you want to start looking at that. If you go, well, I don't want to. I'd be too confused. Then don't. It's okay. All right. But that stuff is out there. And like I said, I want to make sure that I also take this file that, that's got um, that information with Terry and all the other stuff. Put that out there also. So that's there too. Okay. Now, just like with the other book, this book right here, just so you know, chapter one of this book is an introduction to computers. It talks about what hardware is, it talks about what software is. There's there's probably three or four pages in this whole first chapter that are worth going over. And one of the ones that's worth going over is it does talk on pages 19 and 20. It starts to talk about object-oriented programming. I'm not going to go through that now, but it's in there, and it's not bad. Other than that, there's not too much in this chapter that's really worth going through. All right? So chapter 2 is called Java Fundamentals. And what I'm going to do is literally we're all, as a class, going to come in and start writing a program right now. All right? Everybody. Okay? And this first one, we'll just write a, just a simple little program. In fact, I'll grab one of those, those programs that we'd already done or that I already put out there for you, and I'll, I'll replicate that. Okay? So I'd like everybody, again, if you're not in the virtual desktop, you can get into the virtual desktop. We don't use Visual Studio 2013 here, so if you still have that open, you can close that. All right? If you weren't here last hour, either you, you just weren't here or you weren't in the, that class, then don't worry about it. Now, John, am I right? We should be able to go to start and all programs. And how do we want to do that from here? Oh, okay. Do you all have an Eclipse shortcut on the desktop? All right, then just double click that and that'll get us started. And he doesn't like it when I do this, but again, I'd like to thank John because he's done a lot of work to get all this stuff to work and to work with a virtual desktop. And he did some work during his break with uh, Terry, more work than I did with Terry during the break. Terry would say, and then he'll talk to you this Are you going to talk to them this afternoon about your Site 5 stuff? Okay. Do you know that every time you add somebody that I get an email? It doesn't tell me who you added. It just tells me I... Somebody new has been added. Yeah, that's okay. All right. Now, hopefully at least, yours came up. And if you say, well, I don't have that, you might have a welcome screen up there. If you do, you can close that. Somewhere over here, there should be an X up near the upper left-hand corner. You can just click on that, and it'll close it. Now, these are some of the, uh, most of the uh, things that I'm going to be assigning this semester, and I've already written them. Okay? Don't worry about those. Does your, does your uh, page now look pretty much like this page looks, except you don't have anything over here? That's good. All right. I want you to understand that in many ways, in many ways, you're going you're gonna to probably think that what we're doing is inferior to what we did in the last class. First of all, we're going to do very little GUI stuff this semester, very little. Okay, and I know you probably don't like that, but we will do GUI stuff next semester. Okay, so don't worry about that for now. Second, just so you're aware of this, some of the stuff that you do when you're working inside of Eclipse is not as intuitive as it is in Visual Studio. So it's not that, wow, how do I do this? You might have to search for it, or, and I, I'm going to grab that and put it out there too because I just thought of that. What I found last semester, and I don't know how good they are or are not. But what I found last semester.
for some Eclipse cheat sheets. All right. And I don't know how good they are. Because people say, well, how did you learn it? I just started playing with it. I do not at all profess to be an expert in Eclipse. In fact, I will tell you, I'm not an expert in Eclipse. But there are a lot of cheat sheets and stuff out there for it. Again, some of the stuff we do will be, oh, that makes sense. Other stuff will be, how the heck do I do this? And you're best off either trying to ask, and I'll help you if I know, or ask John, and he'll help you if, I, if he knows, or just Google it and look for an Eclipse cheat sheet. All right? Okay. So we're all right here. And the way that I'm going to tell you to do this, it's going to sound a little bit weird. It won't make a lot of sense until we get further on into the book. Then it'll make sense. All right? But what we're going to do is we're going to create a real simple application that we're just going to call employee. That's what we're going to do in just a second. All right? So the first thing that we want to do is we want to click File and go to New and go to Java Project. Yours may not look exactly like mine, but it should look at least similar. Does everybody see that? All right. And once you've got Java Project highlighted, just click, just click it, and it's going to start a new Java Project. Now, the first thing it does in here is it's going to ask us for the name of the project. I'm going to suggest, even though you can put blank spaces in here, I'm going to suggest you don't do that. So, for instance, we're not going to, we're going to call this employee in just a second. But if we were going to call this tax rate program, I'd suggest that you do it like that. Does that make sense? All right, but we're just going to call this employee. And you have to spell it right. All right. Now, if you look up here, you see where it says use default location? I'm just curious. What does yours say? Yeah, I thought it might. Okay. Okay, then let's let's do this before we do anything. All right, let's do this. Just cancel. Cancel. Get out of Eclipse. Everybody, just get out of Eclipse. All right? It's fine. We didn't have to get out, but it'll be fine. What I'd like you to do is on your virtual desktop, right mouse click, choose new folder, and make a new folder, and call it, just call it like Java. That'll make it the easiest. I've already got one, I think, called, well, maybe I don't, so I'll, but I'll look. Yeah, Java. That'll just make it easy. Now, the f what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get back into Eclipse then. Like I said, we didn't have to get out. But what we're going to do is we're going to change that workspace because we don't all want to be saving to John. I don't think John really would appreciate that either. All right? So let's start up Eclipse again. The first thing we're going to do, and I'm not going to do it because I want to use this workspace. Okay? In fact, you know what? I'll just do it too. That's fine. So we're going to click File, and we're going to say Switch Workspace. Now, if you look on there, notice what it says. That might be yours C Users, J Wanda Desktop, and some other stuff. We don't want to use any of those, so we want to go down and choose Other. All right? So it was File, Switch Workspace, Other. The good news is after we do this, you should never have to do it again. Yo, you want to do it? You want to do it now? Okay. All right. Before, all right, John wants us to do this first. So click, if you have that open, close that and go to Window and go down to Preferences. All right. Window Preferences and click. Now I don't remember. All right. Under General, click that. Start up and shut down. Workspaces. See how it has all of our workspaces in here? Well, anything that's in here with Wanda in it, you don't need, to my knowledge. I've got, you're in here. Yeah, you shouldn't really need any of these. So you should be able to highlight all of them and remove. And I don't, 
I'm going to keep that one because that's where I've got your I get that's where I've got your actual code. Did that make sense? So yours might be empty right now, and that's fine. Then just click OK. You shouldn't even have to click Apply. All right. Now we'll do a file switch workspace. Notice now all I've got in here is other. That might be what you have too. And so click on other. And what we want to do, you might have to click browse, but under your desktop, you should be able to find that Java folder that you just created. So under desktop Java, click OK. But before you click OK here, make sure this is what it says. D colon backslash users backslash your username backslash desktop backslash Java. If it says all that, again, yours won't say J Scott, all right, M Sawyer or whatever, all right, E Larson, etc. And once you get that, then click OK. What's going to happen then is your screen's going to look like this because Eclipse has to restart when you change the workspace. And again, this may take anything from 30 seconds to a minute or two. All right. What's going to happen is every time we create a project, it's going to now create a folder inside of that Java folder. Does that make sense to everybody? All right. This is that welcome screen. Again, I don't need that, so I'm just going to click the X there. And notice now, like you, I have nothing in there. But now if I click File and I go over to Switch Workspace, now notice, now yours should be set, and it should be set to yours. Yes? Still says other? That's interesting. All right, click OK again. It should save it. There shouldn't be a problem with that. Yeah, it'll restart it again. Oh, it... Believe me, you can ask John how it was for Android. We were constantly restarting. I mean, sometimes half dozen times a period. The good news is by the time you're taking the class next year and, this, and for both semesters, it should be pretty much cleaned up. Now, or does it still say other? They didn't have to click apply before I told them to just click OK, but the OK should have done the apply on it because mine worked. I, that shouldn't matter either. It really should, should work either way. We'll be able to tell whether there's any problem real quickly because we're going to build a project. All right, we're going to put in, this is the whole project right here. See that? That's it. That's going to be everything. We're not even going to worry about a comment. So there's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 lines. And half of them are either blank or curly braces. We'll almost have this done by the time we break. All right? So the way I'm going to tell you, if you had somebody else teaching this class, they may show it to you a different way. I'm just going to have you do it the way that I know works. All right? So we're going to do File, like we said before, New Java Project. So please do that. File, New Java Project. And we have to give it a name. We're going to just call this Employee. Now, hopefully now in your default location, it is correct. And it has an employee on the end because that's the folder it's going to put in there. Did everybody hear that? Hopefully now in your location here, it's correct. And you always want it, if it's correct, to use the default location. Then it'll always save it into that same folder. It'll put other folders in that folder. Now, just so you know the stuff that's in here, Java SE, that's your execution environment. That's a lot of stuff we really don't have to worry about right now. It's all been set up for us. Okay? 
Now, if you look up on the screen, it's totally fine right now, totally fine. You can just click Finish. I'm not going to. I just want to show you that if I click Next, it shows you what it's about to build, and then you click Finish. If you skip that step and just click Finish, it just doesn't show it to you, but it creates it anyway. Does that make sense? So we now have in here a couple things. Okay, We have our folder that's called Employee. We have our source, and that's where we're going to put our code in just a minute. We also have this thing. And you go, what the heck is that? That's what's referred to as the JRE, or the Java Runtime Environment. That's a bunch of pre-written code that Java makes available for every program that you write. What it does is it takes that code and it zips it into folders. The folders are called JAR or Java Archive Files. That's why you see the .jar on there. We should never have to do anything with those, just so you know. We should never have to do anything with those. So what we've done so far is we built our folder. And in our folder for employee, we have another folder that's got source in it. And there's nothing in that folder yet, just so you know. We're going to start putting stuff in there right now. Okay. So the first thing that we're going to do is when you create stuff in Eclipse, if you do it the way that Eclipse recommends that you do it, is you create what's called a package to put your stuff in. It's sort of like a folder within a folder, for lack of better words. So we're going to go and create a package right now. The way we're going to do this is where it says source here, we're going to right mouse click on there. We're going to go new, and we're going to go all the way down to where it says package. All right, so I right mouse clicked on, on the word source that you had up there, went to new, and went to package. There's other ways you can do it. I'm just trying to show you what I consider to be the most straightforward way of doing it. All right, and we're going to click on package. Now it says, oh, I'm going to put this under your employee source folder, which is where we want it. So it says, what do you want to name this package? The recommendation is that you use kind of like your, your domain. So for instance, msawyer at students.blackhawk.edu, but you do it in reverse notation. So in other words, instead of me saying jscott at blackhawk.edu, all right, I'm going to say uh, edu.blackhawk dot j scott Does that make sense to everybody now i don't care if you put the students in there or not but this is the recommended way of doing this all right is it they call this a reverse domain notation so instead of j scott blackhawk edu it's edu dot and don't put the at sign in there either now if if you left it blank it probably wouldn't like it but if all i put in there was hello or something that would still work Right. So now I've created what's called a package. And if I click Finish, now notice I've got another thing underneath there. That's my package. So the first thing we did was we created a project. And under the project, we created a package. Now under the package, we have to create what's called a class. So now I'm going to right mouse click on the package that's right here. And again, choose New and go down to Class. And it, this may sound difficult. After we do this once or twice, I'll never have to tell you how to do it again. You'll just do it yourselves. It is that simple. It's that intuitive. So I'm going to click on class. And now this, is, this takes a little bit more explaining. Okay. Some of this stuff that's in here, we're not going to go into yet. It's just that you know, we haven't gotten there in the book, etc. But it says, OK, you're going to build this under your employee source folder in this package. That's what we want. So we don't touch that. Then we have the name. All Java classes must have a name. By default, names, if, again, if it was, I'm not, we're not going to call it this, but if we called it tax rate, we would write it like this. Big T, little AX, big R, little ATE. But you should always start class names with an uppercase. This is, our, this is an employee, and we can call it the same thing as our source folder, so I'm just going to call it employee. But don't hit enter yet. So just go ahead and put that in, and then just look up on the screen here. All right. 
what we'll get into in later classes are what are called access modifiers. For now, the stuff we do is going to be public, which means basically it's available to everything and everyone. That's okay. All right. The superclass, everything in Java has got to inherit from something. That's just the way that it works. And if you don't tell it what to inherit from, the thing at the top, kind of like root, is object. Okay, so we'll just leave that alone. In the first few programs that we do this semester, not all of them that this semester, but in the first few that we do, we're going to have a main. And we're going to put it right in the same file. So if you would, please take your mouse. See where I've got the mouse? Click on that so that's checked. The rest of them don't worry about. You can leave this one, inherited abstract methods. It won't matter for what we're doing in here. But make sure the thing that says public static void main is checked. Now, let's say we get done, and Jessica forgot to check it. It's OK. But by checking it, it's going to write some of your code for you to begin with. If you forget to check it, you have to manually write it yourself. See the difference? All right. So with that checked, click Finish. And finally, after all this, we're going to be brought up and we're going to see code in here. There's our code window. And notice what it did. It said package, and it said that yours should say the same thing that you just said for your package name. You can have multiple packages in the same program. So if John and I were professional Java programmers, it might be that Eric and Micah had already written a whole bunch of code, and they stuck it in this package, and for us to be able to use it, we'd have to include the package statement to do that. All right. In Java, this program is saved as employee.java. It has to be the same name as your public class. And the case has to be the same. So notice, see how this is saved as employee.java? Everybody see that up here where I got the mouse resting? I'm going to come back in here, and I'm going to take that big E, and I'm going to make it a little E. Oops, well, I wouldn't like that to begin with. And it gives me an error. And if I take my mouse and put it over here, it's going to tell me. It must be defined in its own file, because it thinks employee with a little E is different, because this is a case-sensitive language. So is the language we just went over in the, in the last class. If I go back, though, and just change that back to a big E, everything's cool. All right. Again, we're going to go through all of this stuff as we go on in here. So if it sounds like, oh my god, you're just throwing so much at me and I don't get any of it, that, that I'm just, I, I thought it, it makes more sense to do a program first, to see it, get one under your belt, and say, wow, I did this and it worked. Now, you don't have to do this. I don't like the curly on the same line, so I put it on a different line. If you like it on the same line, by all means, leave it on the same line. So I took both those, the one under public class employee and the one that's under main, and I put them on their own line. You don't have to do that. I thank God nobody raised their hand and said, if we do that, do we get extra credit? All right, good. No. Also, two things. I don't like the blank line here. OK? And I'm just going to remove it. And the other thing is it automatically puts this comment in here that says, hey, you got some stuff you got to do in here. I'm going to remove that. All right? Now, if I wanted to add some comments, if you look at the top, you don't have to do this. But if I wanted to add some comments at the top of the program, it's either slash, whoops, slash, slash, which is a single line comment. Or if I want multiple lines, I start it with a slash star, and I end it with a star slash. So that's a multi-line comment. There's also a special kind of comment that you can write in Java. It's called a Java doc comment. We're not going to worry about that right now. OK? And you don't have to put any. It's just our first time through here. If you want to put a comment in here, you know, if I, so if I want to put a comment in here that says, my first. Java program there. And you see that this is color coded. The color coding isn't the same as it is in the other editor. All right. So comments are green like they are in the other editor in Visual Studio. But keywords here are in, what do you, what do you call that, maroon? Whatever. You can change the coloring. I recommend that you don't. But you can go in there under project and properties. One of those things in there, you can change the color. 
I've had people do that because they want the colors to be the exact same between Visual Studio and Eclipse. All right, and if you're that anal, if that really bothers you, then you can go in and do it. Problem is that every time you go to another machine, you're going to have to do it on another machine. Okay, but it actually that isn't true. Since you're doing it on your virtual desktop, it probably can do it once and forget it. All right, so let's just quickly talk about the lines that are in here. Again, that's a comment. Already mentioned that. That's a package statement. That says that this program is inside of this package. And if we look at, at the way that the uh, hierarchy is set up, this Java file is inside of this package, which is inside of that folder, which is inside of that folder. Does that make sense? All right. And you might say, well, big deal. I just want to show you this. If you look here, you don't have to do this. But now looking under Java, that's the one I just created, employee. So under employee, notice it added its own stuff. And if I want to dig down to my code, it's under source, edu, Blackhawk, jscott, and there it is. And if I were to open that right now, I should never do this, but that's the same program that I just showed you. It says, no, I don't want to. There it is. You shouldn't have that same program open in two different editors at the same time, in my opinion. You may not agree with that, but in my opinion. All right. So this says that basically all of our code is going to be encompassed or held inside of a class that's called employee. Again, this is all case sensitive, so if I make that a big C, notice it doesn't, it doesn't recognize it. All right, go back and make it a small C again, boom, it goes back, it reverts back to its other color, etc. All right, so this is a public class. What public means is it is, it is possible it is possible for other programs to directly interface with this because it's public. All right, It's a class. Java is a strict object-oriented programming language, so everything that you put into Java must be put into a class. This class's name is employee, and as I already told you, that name, including the spelling and the, the uh, caseness, it's got to be the exact same as, name as that one. Java is block structured. Everything you put in has to be within curly braces. So this is our beginning curly brace for our class. That's our ending one. Some people like to do this. You don't have to. If you want to, feel free to. And do this. Again, you don't have to do what I'm showing you right now. If it helps, do it. And if it, no, it's just confuses the hell out of me, then don't do it. A lot of my code, you'll see, I've done all that. That way I know every right curly that goes with every left curly. All right? Okay. There's two types of things that you can write in Java. You can write applications and you can write applets. Applets we go over next semester. Applications must have a main in them. It's your starting point for the program. That's why we told when we checked that one box I told you to check, that added this. So if you forget to check it, you have to manually put it in there. All right. All right, for now, just think of static means there can only be one of them. We'll get into static in a later class. All right. Also, doesn't return anything. It's void of a return. It doesn't return anything. So if I try to put in here the, a return statement, I'll, I should get an error message sooner or later, if nothing else, when the program runs, because I said there is no return. All right. The name of the method here, method is another name for function. All right. If you write in an object-oriented class or, or program uh, language like this, you typically refer to them as methods, not functions. It's called main. And if I do pass anything in, I pass in an array, which is bracket, bracket, of strings, and it's referred to as args. Now, do I remember, do I expect you to remember that? No. You don't ever need to do another thing with that, ever. But it's, it's a necessary evil. But what if I forgot about it? What if I just thought, you know, you went over so much stuff, and I don't remember any of it. Notice when you take your mouse and you put it on some of the stuff that's in here. All right. Yeah, I'm making a liar. But some of the stuff, what's going to happen is Eclipse does have different kinds of help that will come up automatically for you. All right. So again, block structured. So this is the beginning of main. 
that's the end of Maine. All right? And I'm going to give you the code for the rest of the program. The rest of the code, it's about 10 or 11 lines, and then we're taking a break. So I'm going to say here, string, first name, equals You can use your own name in here. You can use mine. It really and truly doesn't matter. You don't have to line it up real pretty like I'm doing here. I don't want that to be a string. But you can. You all here I said you don't have to line it up to be real pretty and all line up, but you can. I'm going to cheat a little bit here and then go back and change this. I want one, two, three, four, five, six of these. Okay. If you want to line stuff up so it's little pretty little soldiers, you can do that, but you don't have to. I'll do it as soon as I can figure out how. I got to remember. You remember how to do how to change the font size? Come right back. Well, there it is. So if anybody needs it, so I can put that into the file for today, too. All right, go to general.
I'll tell you what time. I'll get it during the break. Okay, and you'll you'll still have time. Wish it would do just what uh, Notepad plus plus does, and let me do a Control plus, but it doesn't take that. After you've done all that, either do a file, save all again, or click up here under the double disk icon. <coughs> That's it. Now, I just want to show you this because then we're taking a break, okay? But if you look, to run this, not very difficult, I'm going to do run, run. And there's my information. Jeff's got zero or zero rate, so zero gross. So if I do come back up here, and I really should have had you done that, but I didn't. And if I change the hours, so if I say I work 40 hours and I make $10 an hour, for example, okay, and I save that, now when I do a run run, it says 40 hours, $10 an hour, $400. See that? All right. So there is the entire program right here. And I'd like everybody, hopefully, to have that done. And then we'll pick it up there after the break. All right? Who was that masked lady? I'm going to, I'm, it'll come right back. I want to stop taping, okay?